I'm going to give an overview of Orbital ATK and talk about the company's direction moving forward. When we think of aerospace manufacturers, we think of SpaceX and perhaps the ULA. Let's face it, SpaceX is amongst the coolest and most captivating companies in the world, with grand missions to make humanity a multi-planetary species. But in the past seven years, the number of commercial space companies has grown from a little over 50 in 2010 to over 200 today. There will be plenty of opportunities for many, many companies in the future. The the space industry generated $250 billion in 2016, and that figure will continue to grow as the space economy expands from low Earth orbit to cislunar space and beyond. That's why we're going to get to know all of the major players in the space industry so we can better understand what's on the horizon. So let's take a look at Orbital ATK. Is Orbital ATK a company to be excited about, or are they destined to be among the rest not named SpaceX? Let's find out. Welcome to Neoscribe, research in the future for you, so you don't have to. If you're new to my channel, I cover topics such as space exploration, robotics, and all things future. So if you want to know how cool life will be like in the future, hit the subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out. All right, Orbital ATK is an American aerospace manufacturer and defense industry company. And at closer look, they are more interesting than what you might realize. They are headquartered out of Dulles, Virginia, and have around 13,000 employees. They design, build, and deliver space, defense, and aviation-related systems to customers around the world, both as a contractor and as a supplier. Orbital ATK has three space launch vehicles, the Pegasus, the Minotaur, and the Antares. And they are currently developing their next generation rocket, which I hope they call Centaur, to complete their Mystical Creatures of Narnia collection. Orbital ATK are leaders in 1.5 to 5.5 kilowatt geosynchronous communication satellites, which are used to provide direct to home TV broadbanding, among other uses. They're also defense systems industry leaders in precision weapons, missile warning products, and ammunition, gun systems, and tactical rocket motors serving America and its allies. They are the largest producer of small caliber ammunition, as well as a leading manufacturer of medium and large caliber ammunition and gun systems. Orbital ATK was formed in 2015 as a result of the merger of Orbital Sciences Corporation and parts of the Alliant Tech Systems, or ATK for short. Before we talk further about Orbital ATK, let's take a look at the origins of each company starting with Orbital Sciences Corporation. Orbital Sciences Corporation was founded in 1982 by three friends, David Thompson, Bruce Ferguson, and Scott Webster, who all met while attending Harvard Business School. They received their first contract from in 1985 to build upper stage vehicles for NASA. In 1988, they acquired Space Data Corporation based out of Arizona, which was one of the world's leading suppliers of suborbital rockets, and this broadened Orbital's rocket business and manufacturing capabilities. In 1994, Orbital Sciences Corporation had their first launch of the Taurus rocket, now named Minotaur C which has a payload capacity of 1,320 kilograms or 2,910 pounds. Since the early 2000s, Orbital has been a major provider of missile defense systems with a $900 million award to develop, build, test, and support interceptor booster vehicles. They hit a huge boost in 2008 when they secured a long-term NASA contract to provide cargo transportation services to and from the International Space Station with a value of approximately $1.9 billion. At the time of the merger, Orbital Sciences Services Corporation was the smaller of the two companies with around 3,300 employees and a 2014 revenue of $1.3 billion. Now let's take a look at ATK. ATK was officially formed in 1990, but they were originally the defense business division of the Fortune 500 conglomerate Honeywell. You may recognize that brand as the common manufacturer of thermostats. As the defense business division of Honeywell, they supplied a large variety of defense products and systems to the United States and its allies for 50 years, such as cluster bombs, napalm, and landmines. After its spin-off as an independent company, ATK entered the aerospace market in 1995 when it acquired the aerospace division of Hercules Incorporated, who specialized in solid fuel rocket motors dating back to 1959. Then, in 2001, ATK acquired Theocol, which was the sole manufacturer of the reusable solid rocket motor used to launch the space shuttle. Also in 2001, ATK entered the ammunition market with the acquisition of Blunt International. 
This acquisition made ATK the largest ammunition manufacturer in the United States. By the time of the merger, ATK had 16,000 employees with a revenue of $4.7 billion in 2014. At the time of the merger, ATK lost around 6,000 employees when it spun off its sporting goods division, Vista Outdoors. So it's been almost three years since the merger and Orbital ATK is really a dark horse company who is aggressively working on expanding its business. As I mentioned earlier, they were awarded the Commercial Resupply Services Contract or CRS for short to launch supplies to the International Space Station in 2008. So far they have completed nine of the 12 contracted missions and their latest mission was on November 12th on the Antares rocket and Cygnus cargo spacecraft. The Antares is Orbital ATK's largest space launch system and is the result of NASA's Commercial Orbital Transportation Services contract, which they were awarded in 2008. Antares stands 40.5 meters or 133 feet tall, measuring a stout 3.9 meters or 13 feet diameter. Here's how it looks next to the other rockets of past, present, and future. With the payload capacity to low Earth orbit of 6,500 kilograms or 14,000 pounds, it is far inferior to SpaceX's Falcon 9. After their latest delivery to the International Space Station, their last three CRS missions are scheduled for March 2018, October 2018, and February 2019. They are also developing and will eventually manufacture NASA's Space Launch System's solid rocket boosters, which derive from the Space Shuttle. Along with the International Space Station supply missions and the Space Launch System rocket boosters, Orbital ATK is hoping to win two major government contracts. First is that they hope to win the Launch Service Agreement, LSA for short, from the U.S. Air Force as part of the Air Force's Evolve Expendable Launch Vehicle Program, or EELV for short. Securing the LSA contract would be a huge, huge boost for Orbital ATK because it would subsidize the development of their much needed next generation launch vehicle and would possibly add a stable revenue source for them. I made a video that covers the Air Force's EELV program in more detail, so if you want to learn more about that, click on the notification card at the top of the screen. And the second contract Orbital ATK will eventually pursue is manufacturing modules for NASA's Deep Space Gateway. As seen here, Orbital ATK envisions launching the Cislunar Habitation Module on board the Space Launch System, which according to NASA would take place in 2024. They are actually one of seven companies selected for NASA's Next Step Phase 2 award, which is to develop prototypes of, ha of the habitat modules or conduct concept studies. The next step is a three-phase program to help develop NASA's capability to explore deep space. Phase three involves the actual development and deployment of the deep space habitat, and Orbital ATK will compete against Boeing, Lockheed Martin, and Sierra Nevada for the final contract. We will have to wait and see how that plays out. So there you have it. Orbital ATK turns out to be an interesting company, and you can almost call them Lockheed Martin Light with their rich history in both aerospace and defense manufacturing. One thing is for sure, they really need to develop a new launch vehicle because once the remaining International Space Station supply missions are complete, the Falcon Heavy and New Glenn will be in the market or at least right around the corner and the Antares rocket will be collecting dust for the rest of time. But I want to hear from you, do you think Orbital ATK will rise up and secure either the Air Force EELV or NASA's Next Step contract? Or will they eventually regress into a bunch of bullet makers? Comment below. I hope you enjoyed your journey. Journey. If you did, please leave a like, and if you're interested in space exploration, robotics, and all things future, join the Neoscribe tribe and subscribe. I am Neoscribe, and this is the end of our journey.